Well, let's uh, let's round out this class and talk about some of these running backs. So obviously, we have Kyron, who was late, yeah, in that in that class, and he's he's definitely taken the 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 lead uh, for everybody in this class. But we got Cook and Rashad White and Pacheco and B Rob and then Jerome Ford, Zamir White, Ty Chandler. Uh, th- those guys are all you know shots that you can take. And after the draft, you'll probably know a little bit more about uh, where those guys will be and and how favorable. They are as a nice late round shot to help bolster your bolster your RB room. Now, Kyron is the top guy. I, I feel pretty good about Kyron. You know, either way, if I feel like I they're gonna if if you're a guy who thinks he's they're gonna replace him in a year, I'm still fine with having him because I think he's gonna still be extremely valuable into this season that somebody will want him. Uh, but but Cook, Rashad White, Pacheco, and B Rob. Let me get your general just thoughts on on those guys from this class are any of those screaming buys any of those screaming sells or is it you know I, I, you know i could i could tell you right now that the one i definitely don't know how to feel about is is b rob um but you 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 take it away big d i think you know i think for me um obviously i think the star of the show outside outside of um kyron of course is is james cook right now uh and and what i mean by star is it doesn't necessarily mean he's my second best or my second favorite it's just that i think because of what's going on in buffalo i think we got a little value increase right now and so i personally wouldn't mind re-rolling with with you know sending james cook out for something else um rashad white is the surprise to me i mean honestly i i uh, I didn't realize he was a round three draft pick. I don't know why I didn't realize. I, I don't know why that didn't click in my brain, but um, I know a uh, shout out to Matt uh, Foreman, uh, fat Mormon on Twitter. He, you know, he was high on white last year at the beginning of the season. And I was just like, what is, what is <laughs> man, I need to get over to where he lives. I gotta get someone what he's smoking, man. Cause <laughs> I, I don't know what, what's going on there, but yeah, I, I, he just, he just was really impressive to me um, in that offense, you know, he's kind of re-racking. And so I, I think he's a buy for me uh, on the cheap. I, I don't know what his, pr- again, I don't really have him. So that's part of the hard part is I don't know what his price value is. And, and then B Rob is, it's just the uncertainty of the commanders. We've got, you know, a new ownership group. We've got, you know, we got a new uh, everything, a new head coach. You got new, uh, you know, we got new everything going on in there. So it's just like, there's no one from the old regime there for him, but I think he's a decent player. And obviously he's a, you know, he's, he's, he's resilient with what he, what he's had to go through. So he's, he's interesting to me but i i just um i have a lot of hesitancy just because of all the change that's happened with the commanders i don't know if talent wise he's so amazing that you know like like i feel like he's closer to james robinson talent wise than you know uh yeah. Brees hall right like so when i say that what i mean is james robinson has some great 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 time but now he's kind of the treads falling off the tires where um you know b-rob i think has the potential to have you know uh gibson's out of there not that gibson was a major player you know th- there's some pieces that have moved on uh, but i just i don't know I, I i'm really hesitant to do anything with him and uh until after you know until probably into may when i have a little bit better idea of what right. how things are shaped up over there so yeah, I would like I said, I, I I would say I'm fairly indifferent on Brian Robinson. At, you yeah. Know, at, at at the current juncture, um, he goes about ten ten, so late late tenth rounder. I can't say I'm buying or selling. I'm just kind of sitting and 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 figuring it out. And maybe if if nothing happens, maybe I would pay a little extra for somebody to get somebody got the win on them not drafting somebody. And and you know I think Robinson had a pretty good you know chunks of season last year uh and, mm-hmm. and Eckler is is the only guy only other show in town I mean they got C-Rod too um but you know Eckler's not really the the grinder that that Robinson can be for you uh yeah. I think they, they're they're good contrasting styles um but I you know with that being said I would I would probably like right now in our ADP Ramondre's right there Tony Pollard's right there Blake Corum's you know close enough um you know, and then it's like Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones. You know, would you, mm-hmm. 
if you're in the competitive side of things, would you be willing to swap out for those older guys with, with Robinson and just feel like you, yep. just so that you know what you got and you might take a slight value loss, but you got probably at least a more um, feel good about your points in the lineup? Yeah, I definitely would. Um, you know, especially for King Henry in Baltimore, I think, I think I definitely would make that trade even with the age differential there. Um, there could be some long-term value, but I just don't see the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't see him. I don't see him putting up King Henry numbers anytime in his career. You know, he may play. Yeah. I I would hope, hopefully for his his sake, he's going to play longer than, than uh, Henry, but, but I don't think that he can, max points out on Henry um, at, at any point. And so I, I, if I'm a contender, I definitely would feel more comfortable with Henry. I'd feel more comfortable with, um, who was the other one? I'm sorry. I missed Aaron Jones, uh, Derek Henry, and then Kamara's a little ahead of those guys. Yeah. I think Kamara and Henry, I think Aaron Jones, I'm a little, little hesitant on um, just because of the change of scenery and, uh, you know, even, even Josh Jacobs, Josh Jacobs kind of took a hit for me just because of, you know, I know that he took over the Aaron, he's taking over the Aaron Jones role, but the, the way that that contract is structured has me a little, little cautious. Um, I still believe in Josh Jacobs talent, but I also know that the NFL is situational. So things, things could happen. So, um, I mean, I definitely think I would trade Robinson for Josh Jacobs. I don't know if I trade him for Aaron Jones at this point. Um, because I feel like the floor is safer with Robinson and I definitely would trade him for Henry uh, or Kamara uh, in, in, in any PPR format for sure. Yeah. I would, I'd, 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 I'd swap to any of those older guys if I was competing, if not, then, you know, that I'm trying to get, get a little younger. I would, I'd probably swap Brian Robinson for Stevenson Ramondre if, if possible. Yeah. I'd do um, that too. Yeah. And you know, as, as far as, you know, and I, I might even then be, I, I would be interested in going down to even like a James Connor um, because mm-hmm. I know I, I can get RB one upside with with Connor. We've seen it; he's older. But I, I, you know, like you said earlier in the conversation, um, Connor, Connor, Connor can do it, man. Connor can get it done. And then somebody like a Marshawn Lloyd is and Jalen Wright are floating around here in in a startup, and that mm-hmm. could all change when we do the draft and when they get the capital and people are excited about him. But right now, um, the you know those guys are mid seconds. So if I could get anywhere for a mid second for Brian Robinson, I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, um, so, I agree with that as well. Uh, and and then Rashad White. I mean, uh, I'd even go down to Kendra Miller. I know that that's yeah way for the out rebuild there. side of things for sure. I would yeah, I exactly. would swap to Kendra Miller. Um, so that's mm-hmm. good. Um, you know, on the re 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 rebuild side, you know, all all that stuff is good. I'm I may even swap. You know, I may even swap Tony Pollard for Brian Robinson. Um, that might be a little too much for some people, but I. I I'd be interested in. Seems like I, seems like I at least have an idea of where the Tennessee offense wants to go. I have no idea what the hell is going to take place in in Washington. Uh, what about what Chubb? About Chubb? The, mm. Yeah, the cer- the uncertainty of. I don't know, man. I'm I'd probably just hang on to Brian Robinson. <laughs> mm, okay. I don't know. Just I mean, at, Chubb was healthy. That wouldn't even be a conversation. Sure. Um, yeah. So. I just a little bit older and and went back in for this was they had to do a second surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, I had surgery. A, yeah. you, know, you can't love that right this minute. I'll, I'll take just the known healthy Robinson right now. I think. Yeah, um, but that could be the wrong, the wrong choice. Um, but definitely Cook and and um, Rashad White are very interesting. You know they're and, and you know Pacheco. I kind of talked about already that you know I would I would. I'm really fine with swapping Pacheco for a- anything that Damn I can sandwich. late first, early seconds. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Um, Cheese not, roll up. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm too low on Pacheco there. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with re-rolling that into, into something else as well. I mean, he's RB 15 last year. He's a good player. He's on a great, in a great situation. So what else could you ask for? But doesn't seem like we're gonna we're gonna get any more value out of out of him outside the points in your lineup. So you know, which is fine, and we 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 kind of go back and forth with that, and so talk out of both sides of your face, I guess, a little bit. But you know, he's floating around a guy like Troy Franklin or Ad Mitchell or George Pickens. If I could swap him for any of those guys, like I said, I would, and I don't even know yeah. if you could. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if he could either. Yeah, in the ADP, he goes where he goes, I think, because people run out of running backs, and, and he's been good. Uh, I can't even hate yep. on the guy. You know, he, he's right. been good. Um, but I would definitely rather have Cook or Rashad White than Pacheco. Um, and, mm-hmm. may, you know, he's probably outscored both of them. Well, Rashad White was really good last year. Um, I personally would rather have Charbonnet o- over Pacheco. So, wow. Yeah, because I still believe in Sharb's ability and we don't know what Seattle's going to do, right? We don't know how that's going to scheme out and what that's going to look like. Again, it's a new regime. It's a new thing. So I, I think that we've seen the high on Pacheco and, and he's good. It's not, you know, I, I love watching him play. I mean, the roadrunner concept of his feet, his feet just go, you know, so it's so fun. And so, and he's so passionate, you know, I, I like the player. That's, that's not, not the question here. It's as far as, um, probability of hitting a bigger home run i feel like for me sharp if if something happened to ken walker even if they don't change schemes all of a sudden charbonnet is is right up there and Mm -hmm. you know it's like you know so so you know i don't think you that wouldn't be a one for one obviously i'm not right you you'd be able to get something on top of that but that's that's my point it's like would I take Pacheco or would I take Sharp plus something? You know, I think I would you like to a have lot, that I plus think. something. Or, or maybe, yeah. maybe you wouldn't because we've been talking about Pacheco and how the value of what you can actually get for him yeah. is a lot lower of kind of what we're seeing in this startup here. Because I think even if he survives this draft, I, I don't know if he'll survive next year's draft, you know, where right. it's the, as of right now, it's the best draft class that there ever well, I mean, was. At that point. Yeah. At that point, I mean, he, he's probably on his way out of there. Um, right. And he's probably a little older cause he, I'm sure he right. was in college for four years. Um, uh, you know, so I think, I think maybe he goes into a contract year at 20 first contract year at 27 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you know, and I think I, you know, it seems like I'm kind of selling all these guys outside of Kyron for the most part. And I think I think I, for some reason, I, I'm okay with kind of being interested in James Cook, but I can't ever find myself really convinced that I feel yeah. that way. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it completely makes sense. And I think it's partially because of what the Bills have tried to do with James Cook there. You know, they they keep bringing in people. It hasn't worked out. James Cook's outplayed them. But they keep bringing in uh, names here and there, just trying trying to find – obviously, they're trying to find the offset rhythm to Cook. And so what does that look like when when that offense is at its, you know, at its peak? I I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I, I kind of feel like – I would rather re-roll Cook than, but but again, his value is high, and and and, they, and I'm not saying I w- don't want him on my team. I'm just going to get rid of him. Obviously, it'd have to be there'd have to be value there, but I I don't necessarily feel like he. We're doing the 21, 22 re rack, right? That's what we basically what are uh, what we're doing on this show. Um, in 24 or 25, when we redo this, I don't know if James Cook will be you know, talked about, right? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know if we'll highlight his name. I, we could, we could, he could still be, you know, doing, doing great things, but um, he doesn't have that same kind of um, long-term stickiness to me. And maybe it's unfair, but, but just to me personally, he just doesn't seem to have that long-term stickiness that, that some of these other running backs do. So, yeah. So, you know, white and cook RB 12, RB 13 and our ADP, uh, six ten for Rashad White, seven one for for Cook. Some guys in that range: Barkley, Josh Jacobs. I would, if I could swap either one of those guys for those guys, I certainly would. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it cost me a hair more. Debo Samuel, Jaden Reed. Eh, uh, you know, I think Debo is awesome and and scores a lot of points when healthy and in the lineup. But uh, I think I I think I would rather have uh, White or Cook there. Jaden Reed. We've kind of talked I think about. I take him. the shot on Debo. Yeah, just with the uncertainty of Ayuk, Ayuk, um, mm-hmm. if he's he'll be there or not. Um, I, I I I think I would take the shot on Debo, but yeah, I, I I agree with the rest. Bryce Young floats around right in there. If I could if I could mm-hmm. turn either one of those two into him, I probably would. Mm-hmm. Uh, super flex wise, you know, obviously. Um, but I mean, James Cook was you know RB twelve last year, um, and you know had some really good games, and I thought looked pretty good down the stretch and yeah i think you summed it up pretty well there it's just 
what how are the bills going to use him week in week out and now moving forward maybe it's something a little different and, and we can get some good we know that the receiving game is is really solid from cook and we know that he's actually a pretty good running back overall but i think i think everything you kind of you know said about him i, I think i feel similarly and then you know rashad white was a guy that i was kind of out on but saying hey i think he will have a good year for this next year and then you know you could sell a mid-year and and get i didn't think it would be nearly as good as it was um great great receiver which you know it seems like all signs point to the bucks bringing in somebody else um and, and that they've, they've kind of openly said it multiple times uh, but how much does it, you know, is Rashad White going to be RB4? No, but, you know, I don't really need Rashad White to be RB4. I just need our, him to be, you know, float somewhere between RB16 and, and RB9 uh, with, with some catches and some touchdowns and, and still, you know, decent runner. Um, yep. So, you know, should I be out on those guys? I don't, I don't necessarily think so, but I am for the most part. I'm, I'm selling um, for, you know, some of those guys we mentioned and, and moving up for. Uh, the Barclays and and the Jacobs, if I can, uh, uh, and you know, but then you do you do get into areas in those drafts around them where you're like, all right, well, you do land in a little bit of a no man's land, and they are kind of the last baron of hope yeah. of running backs there for a minute. Um, so, because yeah. then you do get into the wishes and dreams, sharps right. in the wishes and dreams category, right? Kendra Miller is in the wishes and dreams category, and I think their ceiling is higher, but they, they are definitely more of a wish and dream concept than the players that are actually starting and playing on the field. So, um, yeah, so and, yeah, I agree with that, you know. And then, you know, for the Buck side of things, Canal is leaving. Where, where does that stand? You know, mm -hmm. some teams withstand it and, and no miss, and then the other teams, you're like, what the hell is going on? And you know, your coordinator left and everything falls apart. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, Miles Sanders is back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if I could sell any of those, if I could sell White or Cook for, you know, that any of those kind of late, mid, first guys, the, the you know, the, for me would be Ladd McConkey for, you know, you know, even even like I'd be kind of interested in Troy Franklin a little bit there. That, that, that would probably be pretty even. I don't know if I if I would or wouldn't there that would be kind of but you know even you know may, and maybe it's the wrong approach there but I mean I'd be interested in in Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks swap out for those guys and maybe that's maybe that's wrong maybe that's trading the unknown for the or the known for the unknown there um, but I just I, what I want is an opportunity of one of these guys to really stick and be be the guy who who goes up to that uh, fifth to th third round startup value and and isn't you know i don't see i i just don't know that i think putting it the way you did going to 25 are either these guys going to be stuck in, in in these spots or moving up and i think probably going to be down i mean they're going to be getting older so they're running back so they will be going down but right you know the point of what you're saying of i think is is how i feel as well like i don't next year i don't think these guys are hanging around they're probably down another round or two um mm -hmm with with hey good player but not quite awesome and at that point i might be a little more in but um right right on their cutoff of of where they are at least in our adp there's some guys right above them that i would reach for uh you know xavier worthy's right there and um you know jordan addison brian thomas you know about around ahead of those guys but if i if i can add a little something to them to get up into that range i'd be fine uh, with with doing any of that yeah no I, I definitely agree I think they're I was just trying to look something up here real quick because I thought um yeah I'm not I'm not seeing it so um I was trying to remember when Antonio Gibson was was drafted I thought it was 2020 was it was it 2020 okay I'm a year off I don't know. I was yeah but but I guess what I'm saying is I feel like I feel like they could go the way of the way of that route, you know, and Gibson, they, yeah, they've outperformed Gibson, I think points wise on the field, but, but I'm just talking about popularity wise. I think that all of us, all of a sudden they're a backup on um, another team two years from now that have some, some good upside and they might have some play, but they're not, they're not long-term stead, steadfast value. So yeah, Gibson had, but I could be completely wrong on Rashad white because I'm honestly like, 
the more I've been watching him and the more that I've been kind of like excellent watching receiver. a little bit more. Lot yeah, excellent receiver, a lot of lot of fun, smart, smart player. Um in PPR, he might have and, and I know Cook's a good receiver too, but I feel like I feel like White is a better receiver. I don't know how mm. you take that. Yeah, but same. um uh and so I feel like he could he could sneak around and have that McKissick um you know, he McKissick stuck around the league for a little bit longer than he he probably would have if he was a straight running back because of his catching ability. Talking about Antonio Gibson, he was the guy who J, uh, JC JK J J something McKissick, um, JD. You know, I, JD. There we go. I knew it was it was J something, but um, but he he was he, he I could see Rashad White kind of feeling that role as he gets a little older, right? Going to another team and being the the ancillary ppr guy so so i think that he has a little bit more staying value than cook does but but i don't think it's too much right i, I don't think anybody was even with mckissick playing pretty good nobody was clamoring for his value for for getting him on the team um he had so he had some decent uh decent play here and there but it wasn't you know wasn't too exciting so right all right well i think that'll kind of wrap us up for for what we you got anything else big d before i no man i think this is a great practice i think uh you know if you're this is we're on the tubes on this one, I believe. So, yeah. you know, from the Patreon perspective, you know, we're going to be, um, I'm, I'll probably upload the sheet of, of just looking over the, the, the draft. So if you're interested in seeing that sheet, you can come on in, join the water's warm, come on in and join the Patreon. And, and um, but you know, we, we, we tend to put up some little research and pe- uh, bits that we may not get to on the show or that. And we'll, we'll talk about them either on the Patreon or in the discords. And so, um, you know, just, like holler at your at your boys here and and uh that's all i got on this side man yeah no i think it was a good exercise to see what comes out every year what hits what doesn't hit just to revisit and then you know some buy sell hold um a lot a lot of fun a lot of fun guys out of these last couple of classes who have who uh, you know especially you know this even the one the, the 23 class was as had been pretty strong uh there as well but all all having different offerings uh to the uh, fantasy football spectrum here so uh, like I said we're, we're gonna head on over to Patreon we're gonna do some roster reviews over there we got some more roster reviews uh, coming f- for the public so we're, we're heading through those and as, as the draft draws closer uh, we're gonna get some answers to these things and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably I'll probably at Big D as well I, I would assume we'll have a better feeling on um, you know a lot of these guys on on which way they're going and and it's basically going to come down to where the value goes and where the value stays and whether or not we'll be in or out the cool thing is is there isn't a whole lot of guys at least threatening to cook and white to really really come in and and just kill their value yeah um so you know that that's one aspect that we didn't explore a ton of um yeah. but like if if let's say the bucks draft someone like estime in the fourth round fifth round you know he he could certainly take some touchdowns and some you know some runs away from or 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 james cook even you know if both of those teams seem like they want a guy like like yeah. that to, to bring into the fold right um but yep. it could be a late round guy and if they hit could be a bummer and if they don't you know it's laughing all the way to the bank because maybe you got a little bit a, a tiny discount on those guys who can prove to score some good points and be good fantasy assets just uh, for whatever reason, weren't weren't the 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 guys that me and Big D desire. Uh, desire. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Got a little 21, 20, 22 <laughs> class recap for your pleasure. Uh, we'll be we'll do one more live draft. So be sure to tune into that. We got uh, plenty of other stuff coming your way, and then locked and loaded for the draft. We'll be doing that with the Discord peeps uh we'll be hammering best balls after the draft is over once the smoke clears a little bit uh with the patrons um and i think we might try to do some on underdog as well so uh lots and lots of good stuff going on over there we got player pages we got adp we got mocks we got uh, uh we'll have rankings and all that stuff uh right up to the draft and then right after the draft so very much appreciate you and we will catch you next time